Hi guys, I haven't made a video in quite a while, but maybe a month ago or so I got into um, home automation stuff. Should have got into it a lot sooner, um, but I'm using a home assistant here. Uh, I'm running in a Docker container on my uh, Unraid server. Um, it is pretty sweet. I am loving it, that's for sure. Um, I think the possibilities are pretty much endless with this kind of thing. Um, I have Philips Hue bulbs, pretty much an entire house on the first floor anyways. Every single bulb is a hue. Um, most of them are just white ones. Um, the living room has some colored ones. Um, there's some LED strips outside. Um, those are controlled as well. Um, another recent thing I got here is a 3D printer. Um, that isn't going to be there much longer. Um, that's connected with Octopi, but that's also running in like a virtual machine. Um, but it's intended to go on a Raspberry Pi, and it will be, and then the Raspberry Pi will be wireless, and then I can put this, it's probably going to go upstairs, I'm thinking, because I kind of need that space for computers, um, but for now, the printer's right there. Um, I got a garage camera, front door camera, and the iguana cage camera as well. Uh, but there's a lot of things going on here. Um, some of them are using the IF the if service here kind of experimenting on what works the quickest for closing and opening the garage door when um, I come home and leave um, this seems to be working like BAM like perfect um, I'm driving up and the garage door is opening as I'm pulling in um, I did use uh, was it own tracks and that was kind of a hit or miss sometimes it was delayed by a lot um, the router router works fine as well um, but sometimes my phone is stupid and it's in my pocket or whatever, it doesn't connect to Wi-Fi when I'm in the driveway until I actually get it out. And then it's, and then it'll finally connect, and then it's like, oh, you're home, and the door opens. But I'm just trying to figure out the thing that works the best. And the location tracker on this app on your Android phone, or iOS, I imagine, too, it works perfect. Um, so we've been using that. Um, dominoes. Um, one, I have two of these here because one controls the porch lights and one does the living room lights um, because Domino's has their order tracker online. Put the pizza in the oven and then eventually it'll say out for delivery and once it's triggered as out for delivery this sends a command via webhook to my uh, home assistant and then it controls the lights. Um, I have one program to do like a red and blue in the living room and flash them for a little bit. And then the porch one will actually go like red and blue and white to kind of the match the dominoes colors. Um, so I kind of got a dominoes light show going on on the porch um, for when the delivery guy comes. <laughs> kind of neat. <laughs> um, um, for like when the Green Bay Packers play football, you can do this for pretty much any sport team. Um, again, it, it does things with the lights, changing the lights, and when they score and things. Um, this one gets used frequently, blink the hue lights when Amazon Lux timer hits zero. Um, so when I'm setting a timer for my pizza or anything else, once that timer runs out, every single light in the house starts flashing, so it doesn't matter if I'm in the back of the house or somewhere else. And you can't hear the Alexa that all the timer's off. You'll definitely know when all the lights start flashing. Um, these other ones really aren't nothing, but I'm sure I'll be adding some more, but that kind of integrates with it nicely. HVAC control, this is just our furnace here. Um, the dining, There's a sensor in the dining room, and then the humidity as well. Um, and then I get a real fill calculation, and I base my thermostat off of the real fill. Um, just kind of an attempt to make it 66 or whatever it be, feel the same from day to day. Um, because you know how some days 66 may feel warm and then other days it feels cold um, but I mean most of that's just to do with the humidity levels changing and then that real feel changes um, but I base the furnace thermostat to that real feel number so it's pretty consistent on the way it feels um, you'll see the bedroom is much warmer it actually just finished there are actually no vents in the dining room so it kind of heats up elsewhere and then it kind of gradually They'll balance out, but it, it just finished a little bit ago. As you can see, it's 67 when it's set at 66 because it turns off at once it goes one degree past, and the same thing, it turns on when it goes one degree below. 
um, but they'll balance out. Um, the holiday light effect, this is the lights on the front porch, different light settings that you can uh, cycle through, um, and that will kind of give you some neat light shows. Um, I have three, uh, what are they, five meters out there, three of them, so 15 meters of lights. Um, what is that? I think it's close to 50 feet. Um, I still could use a little bit more yet, and then that'll pretty much be complete. And then over the summer, I want to add some more, like on the garage and stuff, when it's not so cold outside, um, to complete it. Um, living room movie and living room normal. This goes along with my uh, Plex server and the TV out there. Um, when we start a show or a movie on Plex, the lights will dim. And like in a movie theater, slowly dim, and then when we pause it or stop it, it'll jump back up to full brightness again, um, or wherever we set it. Um, it's a little delayed. Um, there is a Plex, actual like a Plex plugin that was practically instantly, um, but I'm just trying to kind of have it all in one in Home Assistant here. This one delays by a few seconds, um, but it ain't, it ain't that big of a deal. It still works every time flawlessly. Um, what else do I got? I can see who's watching Plex. If I click it, it brings up a graph. Um, TVs, movies, some, some series that are upcoming, movies that are upcoming. Um, these are the camera sensors um, for the front door and the porch. They're off because there's nothing detected. Um, but when they detect things, things happen. Tr some triggers get created. Um, one of them being the cam 2 um, when we come home and that camera picks us up by the garage here it turns on the back door light and then it turns on when you go in the back door it turns on the light inside and then you kind of end up in the kitchen eventually and that lights on too um, and the outside and the back door light are on a five minute timer so they turn off but the kitchen one will stay on unless we turn it off um, so it's just kind of lights your way for you um, I need to get a, a Z-Wave uh, door lock to complete it, so then we don't even need a key, but I haven't got that yet, but it's in the works. Um, this one is pretty neat here, the power usage. Um, this is actually connected down into the breaker box for the entire house. Um, so the entire house is using 16.5 amps currently, and you can see things change. Um, it's kind of neat because I can tell like when the clothes dryer is done because I can clearly just look at the graph because it'll be like way up here and then all of a sudden whoop you'll see it drop off and I'm like hey I know the dryer's done downstairs. Um, same thing with like the oven because again that shoots way up and I'll know when it's preheated because you'll see it drop. I could set up some alerts with that too um, but I haven't. I've just been peeking at the graph and then oh there we go because it's right on my phone. Uh, voltage and wattage just does the calculation there pretty neat nice little graph graphs all up for you you can change the scale of the graph and pretty much for everything has a graph um, the weather um, this is based off of dark sky um, this I have something I'm waiting until like springtime when we have thunderstorms um, because then this will say uh, it's thunderstorming out and then that, there's an automation in place that is going to go over to my lights on the porch and it's going to set them to lightning. So I got like a lightning effect that goes along with uh, thunderstorms when it happens. It should work, um, but I'll have to wait until we actually have thunderstorms because we don't in the winter. Um, some of the lights, or I guess all the lights that are hue um, they're just based by room, like the living room, there's five colored bulbs in there. Um, they're just grouped together. A lot of these have more than one, but we don't just turn one on, we turn the whole room on or off, pretty much. Um, some of my domain, just when they expire, um, above the horizon, um, the sun position comes in handy. One of them would be the bathroom nightlight um, at sunset. If one of us is home, is marked as home, as you can see here, it will set the bathroom light to 10% brightness. Um, and then when sunrise comes in the morning, it'll turn it off automatically. Uh, but if both of us are away, it won't turn it on. 
only one, at least one of us is home. Um, what else do I have? Like the the backlight and stuff turning on. That's only will only work if it's below horizon. Um, I'm sure, that there's a few things I'm forgetting that are based off of that, so that they don't go off in the middle of the day when you can't see anyways. Um, there's a sensor in the bedroom here. Yeah, which is also over here under that card and the humidity. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, I have a little board that I put together with a, like a Node MCU and then an RF. There's an RF uh, sender and receiver on there and there's also an IR sender and receiver as well. Um, the RF one currently isn't even used for anything in there. Um, but it was more of just experimenting because I'm setting up another one in the living room and there is actually RF in there um, But that just allows me to turn the TV and stuff on and off in there um, By just speaking to Alexa because I have Alexa integrated with this um, So I say like Alexa uh, Alexa turn on bedroom TV one hour sleep timer and it just goes through all the remote commands I have them kind of like a, a macro with a one second delay in between each command and you'll actually see it going through the sleep timer menus until it's and then boom it gets to 60 minutes and it's done um, I'm saying with volume decrease increase um, then this this one here switches the input to the Chromecast input or the cable input I just say turn on bedroom TV Chromecast or turn on bedroom TV cable and it just switches the input for me um, Octoprint here, that's for the printer, but it's currently off, so it just says unknown. Um, and when it's off, it just defaults to 32 degrees. Um, but when it's running, it'll say the printing and the print progress. Um, and then when it's done, I get an alert on my phone um, from it. So I know it's finished, and I can keep an eye on it all the time. Um, good night. This one's kind of neat. Again, this. We tell Alexa, we say, Alexa, turn on good night. And then what that one does is the living room TV and receiver, um, it turns them off and then it sets the living room lights to a one minute timer, just kind of give us time to get out of there. And then it turns on like the rest of the lights leading to up to the bedroom. It turns all of those on and puts them on a five minute timer. Um, so they turn on for five minutes and then they turn off. Um, except for the bedroom, that one stays on until we turn it off. Um, nightlight, again, that's that bathroom nightlight I mentioned before. Um, iguana lights, this is just their lights in the iguana room here. Um, that's a smaller one. There's a red one. The red one's probably by the camera, so you can't see them. <laughs> um, that, again, that goes with the sunset. Again, at sunset, it turns the light on, so it's not... My lights don't turn on at the same time every day. It goes with the sun sunrise. I, I said sunset with sunrise. Um, and then I, I do have a fixed time for turning off. I think it's at 7.30. Um, but I don't know. That might get changed to sunset as well. Um, not sure. Um, subwoofer. Um, this is because I have a actual car amplifier kind of rigged up in the basement with a huge battery charger and a battery down there. Um, and it just powers subs in the living room upstairs here. And the charger is a stupid charger. It's not smart enough and it won't turn off. It just run, it'll run 24 seven if it's turned on. Um, it has no, no intelligence really. It's big, but dumb. Um, so what this does is there's a Sonoff outlet down there. Um, I have a couple of those. Um, when we turn the living room TV on this automatically triggers with it and then it turns uh, the sub charger power on um, so then when we turn the TV off boom that charger turns off and we're all good um, the garage door opening and closing here and there's another board and a relay out there actually two relays I, I only use one though I got a couple of the dual ones they're practically the same price as a single so I figured why not might be used someday um, but yeah, that's just the garage door open and close, which with the if commands here, it opens and closes the garage when I come home and leave. Um, also, it closes after being open for 20 minutes. So if we come home and we don't close it, after 20 minutes is up, click, 
and that garage door closes by itself so there's no more leaving the garage door open all night which happened quite a few times um furnace away um this is when we are both away the furnace will drop from that 66 that it's set for down to 62 um, and then when one of us comes home it jumps back up to that 66 again uh, furnace day that just sets it to 66 in the morning um, furnace night that changes it to 62 at night kind of around when we go to bed again when we leave it also does um, update garage door state on startup that's just if you restart home assistant it checks to find out the state of the garage door either if it's open or closed um, that's all that one does so they stay in sync light dab everything's kind of consolidated in there um, everything with temperatures and humidity is under that one power that's the whole house power a couple of automations all four of the cameras bus just went by the octoprint one and then the weather um, and then another kind of neat thing is the history state pretty much every single thing I can see when it when it's been on when it's been off so that's kind of neat um, I got the floor plan which is still a work in progress with my excellent floor plans drawing skills <laughs> um, I got debug turned on so it's giving me these errors because I want to see if I'm missing things um, but like if I hit this you see the color changes and the light in here actually turned on because this is the room I'm in um, it's, it's interactive so you can touch the bulb in the room um, that's the porch lights that's the two cameras that's the garage door so it's, it's all interactive that's the furnace you can see it's idle um, yeah but yeah I, mean, I think that pretty much covers it for now um, it's a never ending work in progress um, I don't know if you guys want to see how some of these things are done or how they're coded in the background or some of the adreno boards I'm using or sensors or whatever that makes it all work because the whole thing is pretty much no damn CU boards um, one there is a Adreno Mega um, that goes along with the power meter one for the analog inputs and it also has a node MCU to give it the Wi-Fi connection um, but yeah I mean, if you guys are interested in seeing more I will make some uh, more videos on this thanks for watching